aging or improve health span. But um, and maybe one of the tactics are if you're deficient in, in certain hormones, that can be a benefit. I know you've really excelled in in, in, in hormone treatment. I think that's some of the base of what, you, what you've done. So you want to talk a little bit about on, on the TRT side or HRT or other hormones, which, which hormones do you include for your patients? And what are your thoughts, uh, how it ties in with a health span? We're answering you quite literally. I mean, it's kind of a, a loaded question in that, but you, 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 you know, you spelled it out for my patients. We can replace all the hormones, but my patients typically aren't interested in, but one or maybe two, possibly three hormones. And more specifically, testosterone is the one that, uh, you know, like the old Saturday Night Live skit for, for Shimmer. It's a floor wax. No, it's a dessert topping. Uh, you know, it gets your attention because it does so many yeah. things. And people are usually coming in for a lack of energy, uh, a lack of libido, just a general lack of, um, you know, good sense of well-being. And again, I say it all the time, as the French say, joie de vivre, right? And also the inability to control your body composition like we could in our 20s much more easily, right? And testosterone certainly leverages all that, okay? Uh, for a female, yeah. modulating estrogen becomes important as she goes, you know, from perimenopause closer into full-fledged menopause and has, you know, signs and symptoms of estrogen deficiency, including you know, hot flashes, night sweats, uh, eventually even vaginal dryness, typically in the, in the 60s. So estrogen becomes an important hormone to modulate. Along with that, progesterone is necessary for the females because of the uterus. So in short, that's the th those are the three that most people come for. But having said that, for example, progesterone can be used in males and females for a female, not just to counter the effects of estrogen on the uterus, but for um, uh, activation of the GABA receptors, the things that make you feel relaxed, okay? It's not going to act like alcohol or a Valium or something like that, but that's just one example of another use for them. And we were talking earlier about, you know, pregnenolone yes. as something that helps uh, with cognition in mood, obviously, in some way, memory, memory uh, your appreciation of color. Now, most people don't come into my office and say, you know, I'm kind of losing my sense of color in my sight, you know, so... It's not one of the, the sexy hormones, but again, we can use different hormones than the top three, we'll call it. What are your thoughts? Does, do you think that pregnenolone converts into allopregnanolone a bit, or does the dose make a difference? Because there was some, I think a new drug that came out in the US, that I think is, is IV treatment for allopregnanolone? Or? Well, that's a great question because, uh, first of all, for it to be converted into 5-allopregnanolone and uh, um, dihydropregnanolone, uh, uh, yeah. okay, orally works much better okay and the, as you mentioned earlier you know the dosage the the, the 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 poisons in the dose always you know you got to use a sufficient dose but yeah that's where you get the attachment to the GABA receptor okay well, i guess i use a baby dose 10 milligrams of pregnant alone close you know i mean interestingly though quick uh, fun fact uh men and women can use equivalent amounts up to 400 milligrams pardon i've been using 50 yeah and, and you find that else that's good. I, I find it calms uh, before. So I use the pregnenolone before bed and, and, and uh, DHA, DHA in the morning. A low dose again, yeah. 10 milligrams, yeah. Because DHA can tend to give you a little bit more energy, whereas the progesterone obviously taking oral really should help you relax. Though DHA helps also reduce anxiety as well, right? Well, that sense of well-being. And this is where it gets really complicated. And I argue very fun for us anyway, because you have to mix and match and you have to adapt to the individual and find out how they react to it. Because, you know, as I, I use the word a lot with testosterone, for example, with leverage. If you're an anxious person to begin with, right, and there's not much, just for argument's sake, that you could do about it, well, then you're going to give yourself more energy to be anxious. But if you can, because you feel more energetic and less fragile, maybe, you know, like when you're sick, the world sucks, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you react to everything. But, you know, if you're feeling like, oh, I have confidence, I feel better, you're less likely to feel down or anxious because you don't feel like, oh, the world's coming down on me. So you see how it can react differently to, to, for different people. Of course, yeah, everyone reacts differently to testosterone. We've had the stories of the <laughs> testosterone cream and the patient's up all night and they're full of worry. And, they're not, and other patients they take it and they're absolutely brilliant on it and they love it and it's changed their whole life. So everyone's so individual and you've probably seen that too in, in your practice. Yeah, so it makes it fun for us, but maybe not so much fun for that individual patient, right? Do you, do you measure the pregnant alone uh, on certain, or do you measure, um, you mean for a or, do, or, yeah, or DHEA for the yes, assays? Yeah, right. yeah, no, we have, um, we had one instance where uh, an older, uh, um, 
somewhat small lady was sent home to come back for another draw because they were taking so many bottles of blood. It's a joke, but yeah, yeah I mean, we try and be as comprehensive as possible and reasonable. Uh, she's the only one, and I don't know what the lab assistant was really thinking about because you should be able to give, you know, 11 vials of blood or whatever yeah, without having an issue. But the point being that, uh, yeah, all these hormones, back to your earlier question, uh, can be manipulated and do have some value in doing so if you and the patient are willing to do so, right, Jordan? I mean, how many times does someone come in and say, well, I feel great on testosterone, doc, but I'd also like to adjust my uh, pregnenolone and my DHEA. I mean, it's usually something that we have to introduce because we're treating a, a sign or symptom rather than the patients raising their hand, right? At least for me. Yeah. Oh. Or for fertility reasons, to preserve or return, you know, fertility or limit its, its loss. I've also found, though, that in certain cases it can be used, and it's not often, but I think we were speaking to lunch about intertesticular estrogen, which can affect your libido. So occasionally I'll use it for that too. To yeah. How about you? Yeah. Do you believe that HT implementation improves the steroidogenesis? Since you, when you inject testosterone, you shut off the testosterone production from uh, progesterone, perennial progesterone, et cetera. So when you introduce the HG, you improve the whole steroidogenesis or it's a myth? Well, good question. We'd have to do the studies, the properly uh, designed studies. Again, we were talking about that at lunch, but it makes sense theoretically that, you know, you would have what we refer to as backfill, right? If you were producing some endogenous testosterone in the...